Hey guys, James with Esprit Tech Jetty USA, and we wanted to get out a quick video just to go over the new Rex Assist receivers, uh, get into some of the requirements of you on the transmitter side, and then do the wizard and some of the basic programming with you. Uh, we've chosen this awesome 3D Hobby Shop Slick 580 uh, from a customer to use this to demo with. It's a great airplane to do. It's a very basic setup, so you don't have a lot uh, of programming to do on it. Um, I've gone ahead and the aircraft is all set up. Everything is working very well. A couple of things you want to do if you're working like I am with a live air, air, aircraft with a prop uh, is of course to do a throttle cut and then when you get into the menu actually do the throttle lock. So if you hit menu on the main menu bottom left hand corner function button one you'll see throttle lock. So make sure that you have a locked symbol there. Uh, before you start getting into the programming because you will have to move the throttle stick or manipulate that side so you don't want any accidents. We're going to go ahead and go through the couple of things that you need to do to set up. One of those is in your function assignment when you create the new model you're going to have to create at least one additional function. Uh, some of you are going to want to create uh, two, three, four additional functions that'll tie into the gyro system. Uh, the one that you have to do is a mode that allows you to switch between the three modes of the gyro, uh, whichever of those three modes you select. Um, so you're going to create a function, name it mode, uh, and assign it to any three position switch. The next things that I created uh, were roll tuning and pitch tuning functions and assign those to the sliders. That's going to allow me to, uh, to adjust my gain in flight specifically to those two axes. Those are the two that I want control over. Uh, so I've created functions, assigned them to the switches, and then of course don't forget to go into servo assignment and make sure you assign those three additional functions to the receiver output. So you want to make sure that those are there so that they're getting to the assist. Now that we have shown you that, we'll go ahead go into Device Explorer and log into our Rex 10 Assist. Uh, when you first log in, it'll bring up a very short uh, menu, configuration tele telemetry, telemetry min-max, and vibration analysis. We're going to go ahead and go into configuration. That's going to open up the assist menu. Uh, we're going to start on the quick wizard. So we're going to click on wizard. And we're going to change the vehicle type from assist off to airplane assist. It'll ask me if I want to apply. I'm going to tell it yes. Uh, we're going to go in and check our vehicle type. Yep, it is an airplane, so we're going to go next. Uh, now you have to assign the properties. Now you can choose between multiple types of aircraft. We're going to go ahead and just choose Acro 3D. Uh, that's going to give us the algorithms we want. The next thing you're going to get to is your receiver placement. We chose the default horizontal placement. We are laying flat uh, in on the battery tray with the assist receiver arrow pointed towards the front of the aircraft. You're always going to want to pay very close attention to how you mount it. Make sure you choose the right position so that your gyros are working in the correct orientation and pay very close attention to the small label that says assist and has an arrow. That always needs to be pointed in the correct direction that matches that orientation. Um, there is a full menu of ways that it can be mounted, so make sure you look through that. Choose the one that works best for you. We're going to go ahead and go to the next page. Uh, this is where you get into, if you're using an M-Speed for airspeed correction, you can select that here. We are not. We are also not using a gimbal. Uh, we are using all digital servos, so you see that that has been clicked there. Uh, if you're using a mix of servos, some digital, some not, make sure you unclick or make that an X so the system knows uh, how fast to send the signal. Uh, the next screen you get to is very important. This is where you assign or calibrate the sticks uh, and the aircraft. Uh, it learns the positions of the surfaces at rest. So this is where it's learning your plane. So this is your first uh, assignment for these. In order to do that, you're going to click on the first one, which is aileron. It asks you to center the sticks. This is why we want you to be very careful, either do not run a prop or make sure that you've used those throttle lock functions in the radio so that you don't have an accident. Once you've centered the sticks, you click next and it instructs you to move the aileron stick fully to the right, back to center, then instructs you to go fully to the left and back to center. 
Once you've done that, you can go on to the next one, which is elevator. Again, it asks you to center sticks. We'll move on. And it instructs you to pull fully up. And it does say pull, so it helps you remember and push for your down. Uh, we've done that. We'll go ahead and go through and finish by calibrating the rudder. Sticks are still centered, so we're going to move the rudder fully to the right, back to center, fully to the left, back to center, and we've assigned our sticks. You can check that down at the bottom to make sure that if you're moving just in roll, you're not giving any other input, uh, which we're not. So we'll go ahead and scroll down to next. Here is where you would assign that mode that we created in the functions. Uh, this is where you assign your flight mode channel. You do so very easily by going down, clicking the line, and clicking on edit. It will clear the assignment and wait for you to give it a switch. So I'm going to click edit. I'm going to move my switch, and it's automatically going to grab that switch. So we've created that control to allow us to switch between our modes. I'm going to go ahead and unhighlight the line by clicking escape and then we'll click on next. And here's where you apply the wizard and finish. This will set servo output period optimally and resets the flight modes back to their default position. So anytime that you do uh, make a change in the assist, don't forget that if you've made changes to the flight modes, it will set them back to default. So you need to go back in and reset those up and we'll show you where those are in just a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to apply, click finish, we're going to tell it yes, and it'll return to our standard assist menu. Uh, once it goes back in the menu, you have airplane settings, which allows you to adjust the gain value, uh, both in normal modes and in your heading mode. Uh, changing the heading mode affects how strongly it wants to return or maintain a heading. Um, you also set your stick priority. You see that we have it set to 100%. It does default to 60. Um, what that means is that at the end of the throw, it is giving your control 100% priority and zero gain. So in a 3D flight envelope or a very aerobatic flight envelope, you're going to want to run 90 to 100%. Uh, other guys are going to find it better at lower values where that even at full stick there is some stabilization function going on like in high-speed aircraft and that kind of thing. Um, it'll take some playing with, but if you do have any questions, throw it up on RC groups on the thread that we have in the radios forum uh, for assist receivers and you'll get answers very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. Next menu is our stabilization settings. Here's where you choose those three flight modes. Uh, it defaults to off, normal, and heading hold. Uh, this is how most people will probably fly it, although you do have access to trainer mode as well as the horizon mode in there as selections that are available to you. If you click on edit for any of the modes, you have the ability to turn off gain tuning channels to different channels on the aircraft, uh, like you wouldn't need it in, in mode, you wouldn't need it on uh, certain functions. You can just eliminate that and just speeds up the system a little bit. This is also where you set your default gain number the number that's adjusted by the gain in the aircraft setting. So um, keep that in mind when you're setting up to make sure you go into the edit and take a look at that page. So we're going to go ahead and go back so we can go to the next page. Uh, the next is our channel assignment. This is very important. If you click on assign primary flight channels, it takes you back into the area where you can recalibrate the sticks. If you take the aircraft up, you're in dampening mode and you make dampening mode or, or assist off and you make any trim changes of the aircraft you need to land in that mode and go into this portion of the programming and reassign the primary flight channels if you don't and you happen to go into your hold mode uh, those inputs those trim inputs will result in stick inputs and the aircraft will become unflyable so it's very important anytime you make trim adjustments that you also come back in and reassign the primary flight channels, which means recalibrate the sticks in the assist menu. Uh, in this menu, you can also assign additional channels. Uh, those were, would be if you wanted a throttle channel to run through the assist, if you wanted the fail-safe channel uh, to be assigned specifically, um, if you wanted an assist, assist off other than your flight modes, um, this is more for unique aircraft situations than it is for, the, for most of us. 
Um, here is also where you assign your gain tuning channels, like I mentioned in the beginning. My roll, roll tuning and pitch tuning. Uh, you simply click on edit, it'll clear the screen, and you move the control that you've decided you want to use for that. If you haven't created a function to match that and assigned it a channel, it will not come up and be available to you here. So we'll go ahead and go back. So we'll go ahead and go back to our main menu. There's a few more menus in here, the advanced properties, the fail fit, safe features, a few other things. We're going to go ahead and cover those in another video. Uh, this will get you flying, this will get you in the air, and you'll be able to dial the model in. Uh, to really get in and dial the model in 100%, uh, for those of you that are perfectionists, you'll do that in the advanced properties, and again, we'll cover that in a later video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us, either on RC Groups, through the email, or via the phone. This was James, and I hope you had a great time.